This video is about steel framing. We have two steel materials defined in the material list. I'll place the steel planks in the floor plan view to show you their profiles. So here you can see the profile of the ordinary 2x4 plank. And now I'll place the other 2x4 plank, which is meant for the framing's top and bottom pieces, and also for the window's top and bottom pieces. So here. And as you can see, these planks have an open side, which allows vertical planks to go inside them. You don't need to know how to define the profile yourself, because if you contact us at Archiframe, we'll do it for you. Next, let's define the element we used in this wall. To do that, I'll go to the Element Tools window and define my own element types. And then I'll click New to create a new element type. And let's set the viewing direction to be from the inside to the outside. Next, the element type ID. Uh, that's essentially the name of this wall element. And then this element stamp will be visible in the element elevations. And I'll just show you an example of an elevation. So this is where the stamp will be. These settings affect the projections. And for them, we can just use default values. We could set this to zero, which would mean that the element will be invisible in the floor plan view. Next, let's add layers to the element. The first one will be the interior layer made of gypsum board. Create a new layer by clicking New and choose Type Boarding. The layer ID will be gypsum board 8 by 4 by half an inch. And this density looks OK for gypsum board. And the boards will go on their own layer. And in the elevations, there will be lines showing the division of the boards. And the layer thickness will be half an inch. This determines whether multiple boarding layers will be overlapped. Let's use the default boarding strategy. This ID, or board type ID, will be used in the cut lists. And finally, the width of the boarding is 4 feet and the height is 8 feet. OK, and when we've added a layer, it's good to define its type from this layer type menu. So in this case, the type will be boarding interior. And let's set these anchor names later once we've defined and added all the other layers of this element. The next layer is going to be main framing. Let's set it to be based on framing metal. And let's set the layer ID to 2x4 metal. The ID should not be changed after the element type has been used in your project. OK, and then let's go through all these settings below. So the density, including insulation, is OK. And the thickness of this layer is the same as the thickness of the 2 by 4 pieces. So for some reason, it is 3 and a half inches. And let's use 16 inches for the spacing of the studs. And the spacing tolerance means that an extra stud will be added if the stud spacing is exceeded by this amount. And let's set the spacing tolerance to half an inch. This refers to the material ID of the studs, and I'll select here the custom ID for metal pieces. And the rotation angle and Z offsets will both be zero in this case. Now let's set some custom settings for the top piece of the framing. It will be rotated by 180 degrees since we want it to open downwards so that the vertical pieces will fit inside it. We also want to move the anchor points out of the backside of this element. So the Z offset will be 3.5 inches and the rotation for the top piece will be 180 degrees. For the bottom piece, you just need to set the material. It doesn't need to be rotated since it opens upwards like a U-shape by default. This extend inside determines how far the studs will be extended inside the top and bottom pieces. 
So let's use 1.4 inches since the thickness of the stud was one and a half inches. And then here there are no options that apply to metal framing. So now we're finished with the definition. Finally, I'll still set the type to main framing and next we can create a new layer definition. This layer will be boarding at the outside, so the wind barrier board. Again, the first thing I need to do is click new. And this layer will be based on boarding. And then let's set the layer ID to OSB 4 by 8 by half an inch. I'll copy this ID. And for wood, the density is about half a kilogram per liter. This is a good layer, and the thickness again is half an inch. Then let's add the board ID for the listings. And then let's set the board's width and height. OK, and let's still set this type to boarding exterior. The next layer will be airspace. So let's create a new one. And here again, remember to click new. And for based on, let's set airspace vertical. And for the layer ID, I'll set air 1 by 2 inches. And the thickness will probably be 3 quarters of an inch. And now we want to have pieces next to the openings, but not at the top and bottom of the openings. The spacing is not actually required, but let's set a value for it anyway. For example, 16 inches. And the tolerance, again, will be half an inch. The material ID will be half an inch, and the default material will be rotated so that the bottom of the piece is the wider side. OK, and then let's set the type to studying exterior. And then let's create the final layer, which will be paneling. So first I'll choose the type. And then I'll set the ID uh, to be panel 1. The paneling layer will be horizontal, and its thickness will be 23 millimeters. The other layers have their measurements in inches, but this one is in millimeters because it's a default type and the default settings use the metric system. And this part is defined in the data folder and will define the paneling profiles for you. And finally, the paneling type, uh, which will be finishing exterior. And now that the layers are set up, it's a good idea to go through these settings for each layer. So we'll set these anchor points and check that the types and the follow definitions are correct. So let's start from the first layer, which is gypsum board interior. So let's check the type and set the layer to follow main framing. The next layer is main framing. Its anchors will be core interior and core exterior, and the layer will not follow any other one. And for the next layer, which is boarding, we'll just define the layer surface that's further away from the interior of the element. So here. And this layer will follow the main framing. The next layer is airspace exterior. Uh, here, the layer type is already correct. And this layer will also follow the main framing. Finally, the last layer is exterior cladding. This will not follow any other layer. OK, so now our element type definition is ready. It's a good idea to save it to disk so that we can use the load types command to revert to this existing definition if, for example, accidental changes are made. So now we've defined our element type, and in the next video, we're going to place these wall elements. Thank you.